One of the most asked thing on my YouTube channel is to do the same tutorial as this one, but for Premiere Pro. So today I'm going to show you a simple technique on how to correct your underwater footage on Premiere Pro. Before we start, YouTube told me that 95% of you, my viewership, are not subscribed. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and putting a thumbs up as this also helps other people finding that video and help on the algorithm as well. Okay, let's jump right in here. So here we are now in Premiere Pro. Uh, you can see that I already created a timeline with three different footage on it. We are gonna see for one footage that is blue, one footage that is green, and one that is blue-green, but I've been shot at 30 meter with a red filter, and I insist on the red filter. If you do not shoot at those depths, around 25, 30 meter with a red filter, it is gonna be extremely hard to make the red come back. So the first thing we want to do here is to go through window and then ask for the Lumetri color and the window and the Lumetri scope. So here we have our Lumetri scope. Make sure that the Lumetri scope is set to Parade ARGB. That gives us all red, all green and all blue. Here I'm going to select the first clip, which is this amazing seahorse that has been shot in Croatia. Premiere is meant to go from top to bottom on the Lumetri color. You could technically use multiple Lumetri color effects to have each effect separately, but for the sake of this video and the simplicity, I'm gonna do everything in one. Let's talk about the Lumetri scope for a second. The Lumetri scope gives you the luminance value for the red, the green, and the blue. From zero to 100, or here, 10, 23. This footage has been shot in 10 bits. So the first thing we see is we have a red and we have a blue and we have a green. Okay, and here on the white balance in the color area that we can see there, we have a blue and orange and green and red. If I push the slider here, you can see how the color are shifting. So the first thing that I want to do is to have my red and my blue at the same equal level. Okay, around here, you can see it somehow the same level. But my green is predominant now. So on the tint, on the second level, I can see that I have a green versus magenta. I'm gonna put more magenta, and we can see that immediately the colors are more natural. You can see that all the opalade now is equal. All of the color, the red, the green, and the blue are equal, and the image look really nice. So here, we can see that the, most of the image is in the shadow dark tone, and the image looks quite dark. So I'm gonna actually move a teeny tiny bit the exposure up, the highlight, and a little bit more white as well, just to have that nice stretch. But my red is a little bit too much. We can see here on top um, that in, in this uh, debris in the back, it, it's, it's, it has the, the pinkish color, and it's not really nice. For this, I'm going to use a tool called Curves that permits to change the value of either the entire um, image from dark to, to white, okay, um, at different points and to create those really nice contrasts. What I'm really going to use a lot here is going to be the red one. And I can see that on my shadow and my highlight, red are up over 100 and above zero, which is not really something we want. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a point here, I'm gonna raise, and if you can see on the RGB parade, I'm gonna raise, and we can see that the bottom is actually above the zero. And the same thing for the 100, I'm gonna lower it a little bit, just enough that it's not touching 100. For the rest of the curve, I'm gonna put it back with another point here. This is really for advanced correction. It's just, it gives a bit more, more finesse, more finish. And we can see right now, before, after, before, after, the, the effect on it is really great. This is was shot on sand, therefore there is still that really warm, warmy sandy color. If I would like maybe to put it a little bit more bluer, I might just move a little bit that slider. But I think it looks really great like this. Okay, so here is our second footage, which is a massive crab that we saw during it, or, or first time in Croatia. It was quite of a quick moment. I didn't have time to adjust any white balance. Therefore, the image is quite flat. 
And I think I was also in flat profile, which is really bad on the water. Uh, guys don't shoot flat on the water. V-log doesn't work on the water. So we're gonna take the same step as before. We're gonna want to adjust first or temperature slider to have the same matching effect. And then we want to have again, or correction here. Uh, I'm gonna push again the exposure to bring everything like that and maybe a bit of contrast. Be careful with contrast. If you push too much contrast, you're gonna arrive with this weird shifted color up and down. So it's better to actually keep the contrast quite low and just play a little bit with shadow and highlight, then actually do the same thing with contrast. So keep contrast quite low. If not, you're gonna end up, if you're gonna see, I'm gonna push the contrast and see the green and the blue are higher and the red is lower. So we want to keep that quite low. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my curve here on the white curve, which is the wall image curve. And I'm just gonna play a little bit with it a bit more, just a tiny bit, not too much. I don't want to, to destroy the image. Like this, I think it's, it's perfect. Before, after, before, after, there's no, comp no comparison, right? This was also one of the wreck of Koresha, uh, filmed at 27 meter-ish. And we can see that the first image is quite dark. So the all information of the color is in the bottom part of the image. And it's really, it's green, right? It doesn't look nice. So same thing as before, we're gonna align, try to align everything, but I, I hit here the, the 100%. I could definitely put 140 or, or something like this, and, and this would work. But I think it's not gonna be the best image, the best solution, because here, if I start to shift, like everything goes pinkish, and it's not that great. Uh, we can see that also we lose color when we do that. So I'm gonna just try to balance a bit the image in here, and I'm gonna do most of it in the, in the curve later. So I have my exposure, which is, in somehow, I'm gonna push down a bit of shadow to have more shadows and a bit higher highlight. And I'm, I'm fairly happy with that for now. And I'm gonna dive into my, my red. So my red, my image is mainly red, okay? And here on the RGB curve, from the bottom to top, here is the shadow part and here is the highlight part. I'm gonna bump the overall image to red. See, already everything is bumping red. So I'm gonna reduce a little bit more here and in here. Then we start to have this nice warm tone without having too harsh of, um, of an image. I just want a bit more of those reddish um, rusty spots everywhere. And on my blue one, I want to Remove a little bit of blue, and what happened is then I have a lot of a lot of green. So I'm gonna start playing with the green, and move down the green, and then here I start to have a lot of red. I might not want to have that for so much red. I just want to keep it natural. I might actually then move a bit more the saturation down, or actually remove a bit of the color correction here. And if we play a bit with the image, we start to have way better image overall. So we can see that we still have, here I didn't use the, the parad method as I used a lot of the, um, the RGB curve. I also look into the image that I'm doing to see if, it, if it's coherent or not. Uh, unfortunately, not all tools work, uh, work amazingly. And sometimes you have to do a bit of trial and error with those. Um, actually quite black to red part here. Them. I just don't want to push it too much. One thing that I don't really like here uh, is the, the back, the blue. Um, I think the blue doesn't really, it's not really great. Uh, it, it's really pastelish and it's not, it doesn't really scream ocean. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of um, U versus Luma, which means that it's, this is, I select my U, the color that I affected to it, and Luma would be the luminance. I'm gonna select the blue mainly, so all of this part, and I'm gonna put it down a little bit, up. Okay, and maybe a little bit less highlight actually. 
So here my red start to get really, really high. Which is because of this part of the red curve. So I'm gonna just remove a bit of that red curve. And voila, before, after, before, after. Simple, right? And with this trick, you can basically take any underwater footage and make it look like it was shot with professional lighting and, and more. Um, one big tip for you that are underwater shooters is to always keep your white balance fixed. If you use auto white balance, the camera is gonna constantly try to shift the color to have a natural looking image. It is better to have a fixed white balance than to use those underwater mode or an auto mode. That's everything for today. Um, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put those footage in the description. You're gonna be able to download them and to use them to actually try and, and, and correct. Consider subscribing or putting a thumbs up if you like this video and also tell me in the comments down below if you found it useful. Also, if you have any tutorial or anything you would like to learn about underwater photography or videography, let me know. As like this, I can do tutorials that are tailored to what you like. Have fun shooting underwater and stay salty.